The first is we show the business owner without looking at numbers, without looking at financials, we show the business owner what's working and what's not in their business. So that's number one. And we do it by a color-coded scoreboard. We call it a scoreboard where it's color-coded, literally green, red, and yellow. All the drivers that drive the client's cash flow. So everything that impacts revenue, profit, and cash flow, all those drivers, those leading indicators, we measure and we assign a color-coded score to. So anything that's on track towards hitting the, the client's targets for the year, anything that's on track is green, anything that is not on track is red, anything that's sort of in the middle is yellow that we need to keep an eye out for. I helped out with that client and then he just kept referring more and more and more of his clients. So I was working at lunch, working at night, working in the morning, on the weekends, and doing my full-time job. And it got to a point where I had to make the decision, do I, do I keep this, you know, lifestyle, can I, or do I just take the plunge and start my own firm? And that's when it started. And it was right about the first recession in 2008. And I jumped right before the recession. And we were going to do everything remotely anyway, because that was all I could do at the time. My colleague pointed out that there is no night under 800,000 Hilton Honors points. This year, there's not a single night under 800,000 at the Waldorf in the Seychelles. So the really aspirational properties, Hilton pretty much puts those out of reach. 800,000 uh, points. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, that's garbage. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but like, I just, oh my gosh. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So fourth night free would only set you back 3.2 million or fifth night free would only set you back 3.2 million points. Did you buy the MSC cruise directly through MSC or did you use a travel agency? So for cruises, most of the time we use vacations to go, T O G O. Um, and I found it, they have this thing called the 90 day ticker on vacations to go. They show you the best deals over that cruise is sailing in the next 90 days. Like everybody who listens to this podcast knows we plan things pretty last minute just because <laughs> how often my schedule changes. Um, and that's where I found it. And they usually, you know, find a good agent and they'll throw in some onboard credit. It really is the best prices, um, it, you know, and it's just uh, a super easy process. I'm pretty sure that my favorite restaurant at uh, at your home airport is in D. Popeyes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, the uh, no the McDonald's beside Popeyes. Uh, no, the uh, the Japanese sushi place. Um, that's sort of like if if I'm remembering D correctly, you come up out of the escalators and it's to the left. If you're asking me if I've ever eaten Atlanta airport sushi, you're asking the wrong guy because that's just not going to happen. It was before getting on a flight. With the sushi tummy rumbles, that's just not something I'm going to ever experience. So if sushi done, tummy rumbles, if, love it. If, you, if you're a brave enough man to do that, then I I wish you Godspeed. But I will not be eating Atlanta Airport sushi anytime I am soon. I am I am that brave. All right, let's do some of that podcasting stuff. Um, so the way to play the Hilton program is absolutely to leverage paid stays and maxing out the credit cards uh, for those stays. If you're just going to spend on the credit cards in other categories, it gets tough because on a lot of these other cards, you're going to get three, four, five X of a different currency that you can transfer to a place like Hyatt, where the room is going to be 70 or 80% cheaper in the total number of points that you need. Whereas if you're earning that and say like, you know, on like an Amex green card or an Amex gold card and transferring one to one, that's a lot of spend. United lost, but didn't. Oh, wait, are you, are you going to talk Guam? Hey, I am going to talk Guam. Okay, everybody, everybody listening is now going, why the heck are they talking about Guam? But this is an, this is very interesting to me. So as part of the sort of fight over these slots at Haneda that United is desperately trying to get as many of them as it can, United got mad at Hawaiian for not operating its daily night flight operation, which was four right. days a week to Honolulu and three days a week to Kona uh, at full capacity. Uh, and it's daytime flight also, but especially the night one, because they wanted it for Guam. And United went so far as to demand the DOT just assign it to them so they could run Guam and tell Hawaiian that they were done because Hawaiian was not committed to running it seven days a week. Hawaiian said, no, 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 we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We promise. Here's our plan and drew up a plan of how they were going to ramp up to daily service or nightly service uh, and use that slot. Except yesterday in the midst of all these filings that came through, uh, Hawaiian slipped one in that said, oh, by the way, we're giving up our night slot as of April 2nd. Sorry, goodbye. So it's a little bit of a consolation prize there. Uh, we'll see what happens. A little because you're talking 
you're talking was like 14 1500 miles between Tokyo and Guam. I don't know how much demand there is between the two. So they'll they'll serve it with an aero body, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, right? 737 is going to make that trip. It'll right. be fine. Yeah, 150 um, seats. But yeah, it, it, they listen. They do it to Narita all the time. They just want to move that over to Haneda, and it, that's one where connections really do matter. Um, uh, onward connections with the uh, ANA network are, are useful. Um, there's some military flow traffic because the U.S. has some, a lot of stuff in Guam, and then honestly, I think. Guam has been the sort of low rent version of Hawaii for some vacationers out of Japan. And if they can't afford Honolulu, maybe they can still afford Guam.